Buenas tardes, este, mi nombre es Verónica Solís, soy mamá de dos estudiantes, una de la escuela High School Roosevelt y una de aquí de Atma. Este, el propósito de esta reunión es educar a padres, maestros y estudiantes sobre cuáles son los temas que afectan a nuestras escuelas, recortes y presupuestos y cómo esto se relaciona con los contratos a los maestros. No más educar a los padres y miembros de la comunidad, pero cómo, y, pero cómo tomar acción, encontrar posibles soluciones para obtener fondos para nuestras escuelas. Crear una relación fuerte con maestros, estudiantes y padres. Ah, por favor, este, revisar su agenda, mantengan su agenda para llevar a cabo esta reunión. Y nuestros acuerdos aquí es respetar el tiempo de cada persona, lugar y a uno mismo, por favor. A, a continuación tenemos el testimonio de un estudiante de Roosevelt High School, se llama Valentina. Vale. Good afternoon. My name is Valentina. Mo My name is Valentina Moreno. I'm a junior at Roosevelt High School and a youth leader with Communities United. I am here because I want to talk about how the school budget cuts and the teachers getting laid off is affecting me as a student. This semester, my class schedules will switch more than four times in less than two months. I was placed into three different classrooms. There were times where my new teacher was teaching different lessons than my old English teacher, so I was falling behind. Even my civics class got switched, and the teacher was co covering a different topic in his class than the teacher I had before. So this made it hard for me to keep up with my work. Because my schedule changed so much, I couldn't keep up with my missing work and the new work I've been receiving this whole semester. Before all these changes, I had A's and B's in my classes, but now my grades drop. I'm afraid that with the upcoming budget cuts and teachers laid off, it's going to be worse and continue to hurt my chances of going to college. We need to stop these budget cuts. We need to support our teachers and our schools. When public education is under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? All right, thank you very much. Bueno, gracias. Este, enseguida tenemos el testimonio de una mamá. Este, señora Adriana, por favor. Adriana. Buenas tardes, ¿cómo están? Eh, mi nombre es Adriana Venegas, este, soy madre de dos jovencitos, uno que está en, aquí en Hibar y otro en Ben Steuben. Este, más que un testimonio, es una preocupación. Uh, en este momento estamos escuchando que va a haber muchos recortes para la educación de nuestros hijos. Entonces, la razón por la que yo estoy aquí es porque quiero apoyar a, a, a mis hijos, a que tengan una, ellos merecen una educación excelente. Entonces, como padres, tenemos que estar aquí y pasar la voz a otras personas. Es triste que, que, que hagamos poquitos padres aquí que realmente no se preocupen por la educación, pero si nosotros empezamos a dar un paso hacia adelante, muchos padres van a venir y vamos a empujar a que nuestros hijos merecen una educación excelente, ¿verdad que sí? Claro que sí merecen esa educación excelente. Eh, esas preocupaciones que yo tengo es eso, que, que mis hijos no estén que ahorita no estén enfocados en lo que tienen que aprender, sino la preocupación de ellos, van creciendo y están escuchando, es que se enfocan en qué va a pasar. Y como padres tenemos el deber y la obligación de apoyar también a los maestros, porque de ellos es donde nos ayudan y hacemos equipo para que logren el éxito. Ahora, tengo amistades que están en la Roosevelt, que hicieron muchos cortes, entonces hay programas los cuales los jóvenes este, no están avanzando para ir hasta la universidad. Entonces, ¿qué es lo que estamos esperando como padres? Esperar a que recorten esos fondos, a que despidan a muchos maestros 
y que nuestros hijos no reciban la educación que merecen, claro que no, vamos a estar luchando junto con Comunidades Unidas para que se escuche nuestra voz y sabemos que tenemos esos derechos y hacer valer a nuestros hijos los derechos como ciudadanos que son de este país y pues solamente eso, compartirles eso, que estamos unidos por una lucha mayor, gracias. Gracias Adriana, gracias. Enseguida tenemos el testimonio de un maestro, se llama Luke Carmen, Gracias. Un aplauso. Hi, um, I'm Luke Carmen. I'm a math teacher at Albany Park. Soy maestro de matemáticas en Albany Park. Um, and I'm here to explain how um, our contract um, demands and our contract, um, the, cut, the cuts that are threatened are, are going to affect our school at ATMA. Um, you can read a lot of those requests on this blue sheet here, but I can talk specifically about ATMA. Um, right now we have about 280 to 290 students at ATMA. Um, we have class sizes of 30. If we were to lose any teachers at ATMA, those class sizes would go up. 30 students is already a lot of students. I see about 120 students a day, and it's already hard for me to, to give the support for all those students that they need. Um, Currently, right now, we do not have a librarian at our school. We do not have anyone who does any tech supports. We do not have a social worker except for one day a week. We have a psychologist for one day a week. We have a nurse for half a day a week for 280 students. Um, so currently, when, we, when, we, when I hear about cuts being threatened to support staff at our school, I think about the people that are doing those jobs. So we have four um, special ed education aides who do a lot of those jobs for us. We have one who functions as a librarian. We have another who functions as our tech person. We have another who's the soccer coach. So if those people are to get cut, we lose all of these resources at our school. And so we can talk about teacher cuts and pensions and everything else, but ultimately the The people who bear the brunt of the cuts are the students in front of us. So we're here every day, and we want to keep being here. Um, so we're really happy that you are here to be with us to prevent those cuts. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Uh, Enseguida tenemos a un maestro de Roosevelt High School, Tim Megan. Uh, Hi, everybody. Um, so my name is Tim Megan. I'm a uh, social studies teacher at Roosevelt High School, uh, where I've been there for 12 years. Um, Roosevelt's, this, if we, th these cuts go through, this would be our third round of layoffs this year. We lost quite a few people, at least 10 or 12 uh, in July. And then in October, we lost uh, another 10 or so. And um, we're, you know, uh, we have nobody else <laughs> left to cut. We really don't. Um, when I started at Roosevelt in 2004, our budget was over $15 million dollars and we had a student population of over 1,700 students. Today our budget is under $10 million, uh, so we've lost over one-third, and uh, we have a, a student body of about 11, somewhere between 11 and 1,200. Mr. Garcia, do you know? Somewhere, somewhere between 11 and 1,200 students. Um, so I'm also on the big bargaining team for CTU, so I can answer any questions about the contract negotiations you may have, but um, I've been asked to talk about revenue. So everybody in Chicago pays property taxes. It doesn't mean, matter if you own a home or if you are a renter, you pay ta uh, taxes through your rent. And the majority of property taxes are spent on funding our schools. Um, but there's a mechanism, a uh, trick called uh, TIF, Tax Increment Financing. So what they do is they draw lines on a map and all the taxes that they collect within a TIF district, uh, the payments that go to the schools, the libraries, and the park, 
that stays the same. But we know that when property values go up, taxes go up too. Anything above the original amount that was taxed when the TIF was created gets taken out of our neighborhoods and is put in Mayor Rahm Emanuel's TIF fund. And he uses that money um, to uh, finance capital improvement projects. So he builds things uh, with it. And TIF was designed to create jobs in low-income neighborhoods, but what we see is that money is being spent downtown on May Maggie Daly Park, on the new Riverwalk, um, things of that nature. There are individual businesses get TIF dollars. So 50% of the money that goes into TIFs should actually go to our schools, our parks and libraries, but we're being, that's being stolen from us. Um, TIF also plays a very important role in, in city government because the mayor can hand TIF dollars to aldermen who cooperate with him and don't make too much noise. And he can hold back, keep back TIF money from aldermen that put up a fight. Uh, and so it becomes a, a means of controlling city council as well. Now there's somewhere between 300 and 700 million dollars in the TIF fund right now that's not tied to any specific projects and that money rightfully belongs to our schools, and it should be put back in our schools. By itself, that money can fix this problem, <laughs> uh, but, and the mayor has sole control over whether or not that money is released, and he has refused to release that money. So in effect, he's creating this budget crisis by refusing to restore our tax dollars to our schools. It's worth noting that two weeks, less than two weeks ago, am I going too fast? Okay. Uh, less than two weeks ago, the Chicago Tribune wrote that CPS has enough money to get through the school year already. But when we, the union, rejected the Chicago Public Schools contract offer, they suddenly decided that they were going to cut our pay and they were going to take another $100 million out of our schools. And so we see this as a high-pressure tactic to force the union to sign a deal that's bad for students and bad for our schools and bad for our teachers. Um, and we don't think that it's right. Um, we think it's immoral, frankly, to use children as bargaining tools with the CTU. Um, so the TIF, the release of TIF funds, that's the easiest way to fix this budget problem that we have. But there are other things that are going on. In city council, there's an ordinance that um, would force the mayor to release uh, TIF, dis, uh, TIF money into our schools. So call your alderman and let him know or let her know uh, that you want to see a TIF surplus declared so that Chicago Public Schools gets more money. In the State House, uh, there's a bill that has been proposed that would force mayors into, that have distract, uh, distressed school districts would force them to declare a TIF surplus. Uh, that has a decent chance of passing, so that's moving. The elected school board bill, uh, which is House Bill 4268, is a very important bill because Rahm Emanuel controls both the TIF money and the Chicago public schools. And he's, it's his decision whether our schools get funded or not, and he's not doing it. So we need an elected school board. Right. Finally, there's other revenue that we could get. Uh, I would just want to talk about two more things. There's, uh, we need a progressive income tax. So right now, Illinois is only one of eight states in the country that has a flat tax. So you pay 3.5% whether you make nothing or whether you make money like Bruce uh, Rahner. You know, you are a billionaire. It's the same 3.5%. If you look at Minnesota, Minnesota has a rich, conservative governor like we do, uh, but they've implemented a graduated income tax where the more you make, the bigger percentage you pay, and they're running over a $2 billion surplus at the state in Minnesota. And Minnesota's job growth is outpacing Illinois, whereas Illinois right now, more people are leaving the state of Illinois than any other state in the nation. It's also worth noting that Illinois is the fifth richest state in the United States of America, the richest country in the world, but we are 50th, dead last, in education spending. There's two, uh, so the progressive 
uh, income tax, that's something that we need at the state level. We need the mayor to declare a TIF surplus and put hundreds of millions back into our schools, which he stole from in the first place. The third thing that we can do uh, is we can go, over, go after the banks. So there's something called toxic swaps. Has anybody, raise your hand if you've heard of to toxic swap deals. It's complicated. I'm going to do my best to explain it. Basically, uh, from 2003 to 2007, uh, the president of the Board of Education, David Vitale, who's a banker, CPS borrowed money um, in the, in, with variable interest rate. They could have released fixed bonds, which would have given investors, bankers, who bought the bonds, um, a standard interest rate every year. Um, but instead, he, it, you know what it's like? Anybody have a mortgage? You can get a fixed 30-year mortgage where you pay the same every single year, or you can get a balloon mortgage where your interest and your payments go up over time. That's what the toxic swaps are. So what happened is, because of conditions in the market, the interest rate skyrocketed for the, these deals. And if we want to get out of these deals now, because it's way more expensive than borrowing money the normal way, then you have to pay hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in fees to the banks to get out. Now, other cities have had these deals. Out of 11 cities, Houston, San Francisco, uh, New York, I believe, Chicago, and many others, I have a list. Come see me after if you want to know. But 11 cities have sued the banks to get out of these deals, and they've gotten hundreds of millions of dollars back from the banks. 10 out of 11 cases, the lawsuits have been successful. Rahm Emanuel refuses to go after the banks. We could get hundreds of millions of dollars by renegotiating these deals or by getting out of these deals, but he's refused to do that. He says because there's such a thing called a contract. <laughs> yeah, which teachers know what I mean. Uh, my teachers catch my irony there. Um, but Bank of America and other banks have made over $500 million from 2003 until now off of these deals. And $1.2 billion have been made by the banks if you combine CPS and the city of Chicago. This is something he can get out of. He just refuses to do so. So there's just, the problem isn't that there's no money here. The problem is that the politicians that we've elected refuse to go after the money. And they want to take it out of your kid's school. And they want to take it out of our paychecks instead. Um, oh. One more thing. The Tribune also reported that a financial advisor from one of the banks, Goldman Sachs, when he was selling these deals to CPS, he uh, told CPS that there is absolutely no downside to these deals, and yet they've cost hundreds of millions of dollars. So that in and of itself is enough evidence to successfully sue and get that money back because they misrepresented the risks behind these deals. Okay, so the, the ways that in the short term, the way we can get money for our schools right now is making the mayor release the TIF money and go after the banks. Tomorrow there's going to be a rally in front of Bank of America at Adams and LaSalle at 430. Uh, I'd love to see you all there. One other thing I'd like to mention is just um, on February 20th, we're having a meeting. We're trying to run people for local school council all over the 33rd Ward. Uh, the meeting, I believe, will be at Christ Lutheran Church over on uh, Wilson uh, and Spalding on uh, February 20th. Um, so please come out. We have um, financial resources that we can uh, put to use to uh, help get you elected to city council. And I'm happy to stay or stick around and take questions if anybody has any. Thanks. Muchas gracias, uh, maestro. Este, enseguida, pues, un aplauso a todos nuestros maestros, padres, y ahora si tienen algunas preguntas con respe respecto al tema, ahora es tiempo y no, ma no más, este, tenemos cinco preguntas, uh, aquí se les va a responder con sus dudas o, o lo que tengan en mente para poder preguntar, este es el momento que podemos este saber más acerca de lo que está pasando con nuestras escuelas, nuestros maestros, por favor, si tienen algunas preguntas, es tiempo. 
¿Alguien quiere hacer alguna pregunta o algo? ¿Qué han estado hablando sobre ir a huelga a los maestros? ¿Qué se ha propuesto eso? ¿Alguien me puede contestar? Um, what's going on with the strike? Right, okay, I, I can do that too. So, um, I, on Monday, we rejected the board's offer. Um, there are three big reasons. Number one, uh, they offered to cap the number of charter schools at 130 schools, but we know they can't keep that promise. Because say, if I'm a charter operator and I ask to open a school in Chicago, and Chicago Public Schools says no, then I can appeal to the Illinois State uh, Charter School Commission. And the Charter School Commission can say yes, they can override CPS, and they can put a charter school in here anyway. We know that um, right before Arnie Duncan left office, uh, he's the Secretary of Education, he, he released billions of dollars to build 48 new charter schools in Illinois. Um, 24 of them will be in Chicago. And so we didn't see that charter school cap is something that CPS could enforce. And so therefore, it's not a benefit to us. Uh, the second thing that we had a problem with was um, they want to force 1,500 teachers and 750 classroom assistants into retirement. And if they didn't get that many, then the whole contract would be um, void, canceled, and they could reopen negotiations and take the money out of our paychecks. Um, so it doesn't make sense for us to sign a four-year deal that can be then canceled if they don't force enough people to retire. That was a problem. Um, the third thing, I forget the third thing. At any rate, um, as long as, if there's no contract, as long as the union and the Board of Education um, keep doing the same things, then the union cannot strike until the, legally, the legal date of May 23rd. But when CPS threatened to take our 7% uh, pension uh, payment, that's a 7% cut to our salary. Uh, so they're breaking the contract. So if they break the contract, then the theory is that then we can strike. So right now we're waiting. Uh, we have a 105-day fact-finding period. And then if we still don't have a deal within three months, then at that point we could strike, which would be May. But because they're cutting our pay, they're breaking the deal. So we may be able to strike uh, before then. But nobody knows what's going to happen. We would prefer not to strike. Bueno, muchas gracias. ¿Alguien más tiene alguna pregunta o duda o preocupación? Hoy es tiempo, es tiempo. Thank you. Can you follow up on the, the force on retirement? I want to know, are they saying that teach, teachers that are at their 55 should retire, how can they force teachers to retire and then use that money well, as a prediction? Well, they can't force teachers to retire. What they're saying is that if they don't get 1,500 teachers and 750 PSRPs to retire, then the contract will be reopened. So we have been negotiating over a year with CPS and if they decide then to re they could just reopen the contract next year. And that they would say for the specific purpose of finding the savings uh, from us. So that 2,200 number is based on how many teachers are over the age of 55 right now? I don't that's know. That's what the projection? I th no, I think they're basing that number on how much cost savings they want to achieve. Okay. It's not yeah. people who filed for retirement. No. It would be an additional beyond the people that have already filed. Yeah. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Alguien más tiene alguna preocupación?
a, han planeado alguna marcha masiva, padres y maestros, y si se hiciera, este, ¿qué resultado obtendrían si se organizara algo así, a una marcha masiva con padres y maestros? O sea, organizada así. Um, that's a good question, right? Because we've done many marches, we've all been to many protests, and um, the idea, though, with this is there's there's two two um, important things. First of all, it it shows our strength, right? It shows our political strength and the unity between teachers, students, and parents. Um, politically, that's not something that can be ignored, right? Um, we have to be heard. We will be heard. And we can be heard and through normal channels, but you've refused to uh, talk to us, so we go to the streets. Uh, we can be heard that way as well. Uh, the other thing is that a big rally like that makes it difficult to do business downtown. So you have all these very, very wealthy guys uh, who work downtown, um, and they are the ones that are refusing to pay their fair share. So if we live in a city that refuses to fund education for our students, refuses to fund our schools, then I don't see why they have the right uh, to make money in peace, make their billions of dollars downtown. So if, if you're going to disrupt our schools with budget cuts, reprogramming, laying teachers off, um, messing with kids' lives, then we're going to mess with your money downtown. So let's plug downtown and make it impossible for them to, to make the millions and millions of dollars uh, that, that are really are taken from our, our schools. That's the idea. Okay, muchas gracias. ¿Alguien más tiene alguna duda o preocupación aquí? Sobre las marchas, ¿va a haber algún aviso antes para los papás? ¿O ya tienen una fecha fija? Oh, bueno, well, there's one tomorrow. Yeah, 4.30. At Adams and LaSalle, or 135 South LaSalle. Oh, it's on the agenda. Okay, but on the Spanish side it says 132, it should say 135, but you, there will be thousands of people there, you can't miss it. Yeah. So that's the, uh, so this is a protest outside of Bank of America, um, and Bank of America is symbolic because they have taken more money in toxic swap deals than any other bank from CPS, and um, and if the mayor refuses to um, open negotiations with the bank and get that money back, then we're going to ask for that money directly. Um, if our politicians won't take action, then we'll just go to the banks directly. Bank of America, uh, they don't want any negative publicity, right? They would rather not talk about the money that they're making off of our children. And so by um, having a big demonstration out there, we get put that conversation in the media. Uh, we get parents, we get people all over the city talking about it. This toxic swap thing was uh, two years ago something nobody even knew about, um, just like TIFFs, right? But the more we um, publicize it, put it out there, discuss it, um, the more educated people become and the, it changes the demands that people have on their politicians. So Bank of America is a symbolic target. So, um, so sí, este, usted preguntó sobre las, este, de la, de la huelga, los podemos reunir este, en la organización que tenemos que se llama Comunidades Unidas y vamos a sal, puede recoger a sus hijos, este, que salen como a las 3.15, ¿verdad? Entonces puede caminar hacia la oficina que están la Lawrence y la Ketsy y luego los vamos a ir juntos, porque también nosotros vamos a ser parte de este movimiento. Gracias, Jesse. Uh, ¿Alguien más tiene alguna pregunta o preocupación aquí en el foro? Claro que sí. Oh, gracias. 
Uh, usted dice que hablemos con los concejales. Este, ¿Nos podría explicar qué tenemos que decirles o qué tenemos que hacer para… porque eso sería algo importante, empezar a hacerlo nosotros y pasar la voz con nuestras, las personas, con las demás personas para que empiece a, a hacer ese, ese movimiento. ¿Cómo podemos hacerlo? ¿Cómo lo hacemos? Bueno, es una buena pregunta. I would say, um, the alderman needs to know that you pay taxes, that you have immediate needs, your children have needs, and well, funding a school system is one of the most basic functions of government, along with keeping the sewers running and picking up the garbage. Um, and if and and. The police and the fire uh, departments both signed very nice contract agreements with uh, the city of Chicago, which is one of the reasons why they just raised property taxes. So why is it that police and fire, uh, the mayor had no problem getting a contract with police and fire, but he refuses to make an agreement with the teachers. But beyond that, I would tell the alderman, look, that's our money, that's our tax money, We want it spent on our schools, and we want it spent on our schools immediately. And if you can't do it, then we'll find somebody that we will put in power in 2019 that can. You know, that's their job, right? That's their job is to make sure that the people in their ward are getting adequate schooling, that there had, there's quality housing that's reasonably affordable, that the trash gets picked up, that the community's safe, right? And if they can't do it, then they have a problem. And you threaten them, threaten them to help. Tell them you'll run against them, you know? I mean, I think I ran for alderman and I, th it was the great, um, I lost, but it was a great thing to do because now politicians have to be a lot more careful about what they do and they have to pay a lot more attention to our schools than they did before, so. Um, winning, an office like alderman is not impossible. Look at Carlos Rosa, right? He's a great alderman, and he's one of the aldermen that's demanding that the mayor return that TIF money to our schools. I would just say, this is our money. Uh, we want it spent on our schools. What are you doing to support the ordinance to release TIF money into our school budgets? You know, or do you support the ordinance that um, would require Rahm Emanuel to release that money into our budget? Yeah. Okay, muchas gracias. Uh, bueno, yo en lo personal me gustaría este, hacer una pregunta también porque yo tengo preocupación. Yo tengo una hija en Roosevelt High School. Ella este año se gradúa. Uh, mi preocupación es qué va a pasar si en caso que se lleguen a ir a huelga, qué va a pasar con los niños que se va a, van a graduar. Um, yeah, that's that's something that we've been thinking a lot about too, right? I think, hell, I, you know, honestly, I don't know what the city is thinking right now, but I was thinking that they would. Um, want us to go and strike in May, right? Because then t parents would get upset because um, students wouldn't get transcripts. It would disrupt their transition to college. There's prom, there's all those end of, there's graduation, all those things wouldn't happen. And I think that this, um, Rahm Emanuel want us to go strike in May 23rd, and then he just would leave us on strike all summer. Teachers would lose their, health insurance and so on and so forth. So um, our thinking is that it's not good for parents, students, or teachers to go on strike in May. So if we're going to go on strike, we need to do it now or we need to do it in September next fall. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, pues, oh, okay. Un minuto. Under, under Mayor Daley, the city didn't uh, meet its obligation to fund the pensions for the, the uh, teachers. How much of that uh, negligence is creating the, the problem 
right now? Half of it. <laughs> um, so the, the city got from the state of Illinois, the city, city got what they call a pension holiday for 10 years, which means for 10 years, the city of Chicago just didn't pay their bills. And now they have, the, the courts have required them to pay these big balloon payments to catch up. So last year, I believe that the payment was like $653 million or something. I want to say 653 or 685. At any rate, only one third of that, only about 250 million is the normal pension cost. The rest is catch up from the last 10 years of not paying. Um, so that's a, that's a big bill, right? And it has to be paid because the Supreme Court in Illinois has said on two separate occasions that pensions cannot be diminished or impaired, right? So they have to pay it. But what's interesting now is that the debt service, right, paying the debt payments plus the interest on the debt is now even more than our pension balloon payments. So um, this year, I'm not sure about last year, but this year for sure the debt has exceeded our pension payment. So I mean, you know, we just keep borrowing money and borrowing money and borrowing money at these unbelievably high interest rates. I think we're borrowing at eight, eight and a half percent right now. That's unheard of. Where in America can you make eight and a half percent interest on a loan? Right? Nowhere. I get my savings account, I get two thousandths of a percent interest, you know? So I get three cents, four cents a year. <laughs> but these guys are, are making eight and a half percent. Um, and you have to wonder, is this intentional? I mean, Bruce Rauner made his money. Bruce Rauner, if you take his annual income and divide it by a 40 hour work week, that guy makes $25,000 an hour. And he made $50 million managing the Chicago teachers pension fund and other pension funds, public pensions. Rahm Emanuel is an investment banker, or was an investment banker, right? Where he made $18 million in just a couple years. So these guys know, they know better than to make these bad deals. So my opinion is they're doing this on purpose in order to force the district to, to go bankrupt so then they can come in here like they did in Detroit, close our public schools, open charter schools, and then make even more money. Yeah. Thank I think, you. Oh, sorry, no, sorry, sorry. I just I think that's really sad too because charter schools don't have local school councils. Parents and teachers have no control over what happens in those schools, and uh, you have no control over the program, what your kids are learning, um, who the principal is. Uh, and, and, and their tax shelters and investment opportunities for s the super rich. I mean, that, charter schools don't perform better than our public schools. They're pushing them because I can put my money in a charter school and I can get a 40% tax credit and, and even more. I can, I can shelter my money from taxation if I'm a billionaire. That's why there's a Rahner College prep, right? Um, so these are places for rich guys to put their money so they can take advantage of tax credits and they can become even richer. Okay. Thank you. Uh, también me gustaría, este, no sé si algún otro maestro tenga, pueda hablar a algo o, o decir algo que, que sea importante también aquí. Los veo muy callados. <laughs> Buenas tardes, yo soy una maestra bilingüe y muchas veces eso es lo que cortan, yo soy una de dos maestras, maestras en esta escuela que hablan español. So una de la, una, algo lo que puede pasar es que me van a despedir a mí, porque yo soy nueva y muchas veces lo que pasa, siempre despiden la que vienen después, so entonces con una escuela que tiene una, una, un por ciento de estudiantes que ya la mayoría hablan español y los padres también, van a perder una maestra que habla en español. Yo también tengo un asistente en mi salón que también habla español. 
So, van a ser dos personas en tu escuela que vas a perder o puedes perder que hablan español y que puedan ayudar a los estudiantes con sus tareas, con sus asignaciones o para hablar nomás, para pasar los mensajes de mí para los padres también. So, muchas veces me usan a mí para traducir para los padres que no entienden inglés. So, esa es una posibilidad también de los cortes. Uh, gracias. ¿Alguien más quiere agregar algo aquí a esta reunión? No. No. Ok. <laughs> bueno, ok. Um, and this latest round of cuts, the $100 million, it's supposed to be focused on bilingual teachers and special education teachers. So our students that are the most vulnerable are going to be impacted the most by these budget cuts. And that's a problem. Thank you.